How many different space station designs have you seen in Star Citizen? From the beginning, in every corner of the system and all of the concepts. How many have you seen of the interiors? For a game that focuses so heavily on immersion, continuity, and interactivity, the current space station interiors don't feel quite right. And with the removal of Port Alisar in 3.20, everything feels a little bit more samesy. Let's take a look at how we got to these space stations and what the future plans for space stations on both the interior and exterior are going to be. This is another Red Take exclusive for my supporters published in July. If you're interested in getting more development updates like this, consider checking us out on Patreon. If you already have, thank you for supporting my Tomato Talks. The first space stations in the Star Citizen PU were Port Alisar, Cryastro, Security Post Korea, and Kovalix Shipping Hub. While Cryastro is long gone, the other three stations show very obvious differences to what many players know today. These stations were built as standalone assets meant to complete a single goal, rather than a list of tasks that could grow in the future. Port Alisar was a place to respawn your ship. Security Post Korea was a place to hack away your crime stat and Kovalik Shipping Hub was basically just a quest location. Because of these simple tasks, these stations have very unique structures and layouts, but lack almost anything that makes a space station useful. I would have loved for these designs to be built into the modular system we'll be talking about soon, but they decided that when the toolset needed to be building multiple modular space stations quickly was being developed, the shape language would move in a different direction. Thus, the first attempt to update space stations in the game were the rest stops, Space Stations Tier 0. Meant to embody the kind of stop-off location you'd find on the side of major highways, these locations were developed to dot the star system in between planets, which is why they were added in the Alpha 3.3 update branch in 2018 along with the first visitable planet in-game. A place where ships could restock, refuel, and repair before continuing on, with a few habitation rooms and lobby areas for those overnight guests. These stations were built with the same rooms and connectors we know now, and were using a procedural tool that was being made at the same time. This explains why the interiors we see right now sometimes can feel a little mismatched or out of place with the exteriors that we also have. While I actually liked some of the layouts that they put the assets in back at that time, many of these same assets simply haven't seen any development time for almost half a decade. And even at that time, providing the proper feel between each station was proving a challenge. Maintaining visual consistency and coherence while still making locations appear different remain artistically challenging for the tool and the team. So these rest stops were placed around the Lagrange points, areas where all kinds of anomalies gather in space. This offered an easy excuse for additional gameplay components and points of interest in the area. Gas clouds, asteroids, and other little derelicts that you might find out there. But then came the push for diversity in size. And in 2019, space stations actually saw a pretty big overhaul. First in the exterior design to introduce more scale, diversify the flight and approach experience, and define the design language of space stations more. Then, in 2019 and the following years, several new modules were added to the interiors of the stations. Refineries, cargo decks, medical clinics, docking ports, security stations, and food courts all added new spaces to the locations and expanded some of the interiors to be more roomy. But they didn't do too much to change the areas we already knew. In addition, none of these modules really felt like they did something the main station couldn't, thematically speaking, except for maybe refineries. And like I said earlier, this reliance on the older modular styles makes the space stations just feel a bit off when looking at the exteriors and then the interiors of the stations. But these larger hallways and rooms and specialized decks in the stations were sort of the first real pass at truly modular space stations going forward. While they had been putting space stations together before with the tools that they were using, those were still being hand placed. These newer stations were much more procedural based the Tier 1 of space stations, out of likely several. And while the environment artists had a lot of work to do initially to build these utilitarian kits for modules, it made for a good variety of usable assets for the time being, while other locations like UGFs, outposts, building interiors, and the next generations of space stations saw work. In the meantime, other assets around the game made use of this modular building system that started with space stations, including jump points, 
UGFs, some parts of landing zones, and caves. And then came Mighty Bridge, one of the many in-house tools being built into this game engine that aims to speed up the development process. Mighty Bridge allowed for the game editor to actually bridge to other software for easier integration straight into the game engine. One of those softwares was Houdini, which has been used in many different applications and has allowed for easier editing of space stations. But while these tools being built made for easier production for the devs, as I said, players haven't really seen a big update to space stations that expands on the usable space, gameplay opportunities, or a proper grounded appearance. Regardless, I do have some information for you on where these locations might go in the future. We have seen a multitude of concepts and ideas for space stations going forward. Much of this is due to the immense amount of time server meshing has held back the pyro system, but we've also had some pretty decisive clues as to where the space stations will go in the future. The first thing to always remember with Star Citizen locations are the architectural classes. We've really only experienced the utilitarian style of space stations so far, and much like ground locations, colonialism seems to be the next major type, specifically derelict stations. We once did see a roadmap entry for derelict or unoccupied space stations, meant to offer the bare minimum services but not much else, but that was removed back around 3.9 and never added again. Now with Pyro coming up, we've seen preview after preview of what came of these stations. Dangerous, lawless, unmapped, and sometimes hostile locations that can offer new types of gameplay and risk-reward dynamics, as well as new places for criminals to lay low. These rundown stations will still use the same areas and assets we already know, unfortunately, but with plenty of additional site dressing, atmosphere, functionality, navigational opportunities, and plenty of time saved in the creation process. While I'm very iffy on the lore explanation of why these two systems have such similar space station interiors, I also find it cool that we'll be able to recognize areas in the new stations. I also do think these derelict stations will be in Stanton as well as other systems as points of interest in the less traveled locations. In addition to derelict ships, the plan has always been for more thematic space stations as well. The lore team has been in discussion around companies owning specific locations. I think in the long run this idea is meant to mirror what we saw from various corporate and government owned cities, underground facilities, and ground locations. What we see in space now are the equivalent of the UGFs we are about to lose for something much more refined in presentation. These differences could be based on the size or philosophy of the company, or the level of upkeep they like to provide. I keep, I keep going back to, like, Fuel Pump is one of the existing fuel stations we have, and, like, their whole thing was this kind of, like, retro tinge attitude already, like, they almost had... Like, would you say like a 50s-ish kind of was vibe? The, like, but like the, the retro version. futuristic yeah. version of it, which like, I don't know if it's too much of a double down to have like a retro theming on top of like kind of a rundown station. Uh, I do, I do wonder what other kind of, like we've talked a lot about kind of the flavor differences, like what kind of repair stations can do installations of parts. So would you be able to expect to buy a new weapon and have it installed at a lower end station or the only is that the kind of stuff that yeah. they're equipped for or are we kind of limiting I would, what kind I of would repairs want to say no that like low end one of the differences is stations will continue to become more specialized in their services as restock repair rearm cargo refine and other types of gameplay become deeper I think it's safe to say these stations will likely see art changes that better support their role and place in the game but we haven't heard much about better navigational support like the recent signs in Area 18, or better navigational options like trams or better alternatives to elevators. Interestingly though, the time taken to leave a station like Port Tressler compared to old Port Olisar is only around 30 seconds different. But the feeling of moving around some of these stations just doesn't quite do it. So that's an area we'll want to keep track of and hope that gets changed. Then there are the more specific changes to space stations we've seen signs of. Things like new security locations for bounties to be dropped off with the new Bounty Hunting V2 coming in. EVA hatches for entrance and exit from maintenance locations and possibly other mission locations. AI additions like more NPCs and drones will bring more life to the hangars as the location goes about daily business. And of course, the big one, 
one of the biggest changes to Star Citizen gameplay that will be playing out for years to come. Resource Management Like all locations, space stations will function on power and life support, and players will interact with these systems to repair, maintain, and sabotage locations based on their missions or goals. And of course, you can't talk about space stations without acknowledging the long useless cargo decks and the refinery decks that players have been using for years. Both of these locations will see extended usage as more gameplay is added to the game. Specifically, cargo decks look to be seeing some updates with the ongoing cargo refactor and the addition of bulk cargo hauling to and from orbital stations that are meant as planetary ports. As a location that was mocked for being implemented into the game only to make players more inconvenienced, I think an update to these locations will be very welcomed. All of these changes on their own may not make a big difference, but I do think it's clear space stations as they are now are inadequate for the game ahead, and these archetype locations will be seeing many updates to keep pace with development. From the various modules that need to keep being added for gameplay, to the different architectural and branding styles that should differentiate them to some extent, to the heightened populations we'll see, once AI are navigating, visiting in spaceships, and living life in orbit. There are a lot of ways these locations will change, but also a lot of questions still surrounding how exactly it'll happen. While I can't quite put my finger on it, there's something missing from the scale, navigation, and overall feel of visiting a space station in Star Citizen at the moment. The size of the stations is a bit deceiving considering their use cases in-game and the amount of playable space they propose, and I think a lot could be done to remedy that and many of these other critiques. Just don't expect all of it anytime soon. Thanks for watching through this video if you decided to stick around until the end. These deeper dives into development history are something I try to do for supporters each month as a timed exclusive. As Star Citizen has grown, this content has become a bit less popular. Instead of cutting it out entirely, our patrons have given us the ability to sustainably make these more time-intensive projects, so thank you for that. If you'd like to support this, get access to live podcasts and post-show discussions, receive all special codes for my giveaways, get your referral code added to our randomizer, and get more perks, consider signing up on YouTube or over on Patreon. And if you're just looking for more content, consider subscribing here and on my second channel, Space Tomato 2, for more casual news. Thank you for supporting us. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.